So in this online tutorial, I'm going to be showing you all how you can create your GPTs. My GPTs is essentially the new section of ChatGPT's create a GPT, but you can essentially create your own customizable version of ChatGPT to help you perform specific outcomes. Later on in the video, I'm going to show you from simple to intermediate outcomes that you can have and the type of capabilities that you're able to do. I'm also going to show you some other examples made quickly by the community so that you can gain an understanding of what's truly possible with this update. First of all, a quick demo of what GPTs are. GPTs are essentially custom versions of ChatGPT that combine skills, instructions, and extra knowledge, and any combination of skills. You can see here that GPTs are essentially these things where you have specific functions for that specific version of ChatGPT. This is really useful in specific use cases and is going to revolutionize how we interact with ChatGPT. If you want to access my GPTs, what you do need to do is on the left-hand side of your screen, you're going to want to press this explore tab over here. Since OpenAI has changed the user interface, when you click the explore tab, this is the screen that you'll see. Currently, I do know that as of the time of recording this video, it is the day after the OpenAI dev day, which essentially means that this section here may be blurred out for some users. If it is blurred out for you and you currently don't have access to this, you need to enable beta features. So what you need to do in the bottom left hand corner, go to this area right here. It should have your name or whatever it is on your account. Click that, then go to settings and beta then what you want to do is click beta features right here. Then once you've clicked beta features, there may be a tab that you can click. In addition, if that doesn't work for you, you're simply just going to have to wait until they roll out this version to all users. In addition, if you don't have this feature, make sure you've upgraded your plan because if you haven't upgraded your plan, then you won't see access to this at all. You'll need to make sure that you have access to GPT-4 and you're on the plus tab because without this, you won't get access to the custom GPTs. Now, once you've managed to configure everything, Thing and this site is working, you can see that we have create a GPT followed by made by OpenAI. The ones down here are of course made by OpenAI and I suspect that as the store is rolled out and as further features are added, this is going to get filled out with some of the more popular ones. Currently, the only ones you're going to see here are the ones made by OpenAI. But like I stated, as the store manages to ramp up in the next couple of months, we are going to see many different ones. Now, of course, if you want to use any of these, you can simply click them and then you can simply use them and interact with them. Now, of course, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to click create a GPT. When you go ahead and you click create a GPT, you'll then be presented with this page. What we can see here is two distinct tabs. We have a create tab and then, of course, we have a configure tab. This allows us to create our GPT in two effective ways. If we want to create our GPT by ourselves and we're a more advanced user, we're going to go ahead and click the configure tab. But if we want to make our GPT and we want to do it quickly and we want to use GPT-4 to help us, we can simply just talk with GPT-4. We will get that GPT bot made very simply. So you can see here in the chat, it states, hi, I'll help you build your new GPT. You can say something like, make a creative who helps generate visuals for new products or make a software engineer who helps me format my code. What would you like to make? What I'm going to do is demo a very simple version of a GPT using the GPT builder. And then I'm going to show you how you can add some configurations to make this even more amazing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build something that helps people grow their YouTube channels. So I'm going to write in that now. So I've typed in, I want to build a GPT that helps new YouTubers grow their new YouTube channels. Then I send that in. You can see that it is now thinking about the current next steps in order to create a very effective GPT. So it's now building and updating this GPT with all the relevant information. And then it's going to give me another prompt. So it says, great, we're making progress. Now let's give your GPT a name that reflects its purpose. How about channel growth companion? Do you like this name or do you have another one in mind? I actually like this name. So I'm going to go ahead and say, yes, perfect name. Then now what it's going to do is it's going to generate me an auto generated AI profile picture. And this is going to be, of course, built by using Dali three. So in a couple of seconds, we're going to be getting that. So you can see right here that this is, of course, a really, really nice logo. And you can see here is the initial picture for Channel Growth Companion. Does this fit your vision or would you like to make any changes? I actually really like this. It has the YouTube logo and in the background, it also has the arrow going up. So I think this is really cool and I'm going to keep this like that. Later on, if you don't like this, I will show you how to change it. So I've now put in, nope, it's perfect and let's continue. So now this is where we get into the fine tuning. It says, what type of advice should it focus on most or how should it present that advice? And this is where you need to give it specifics on how you want it to present the information that you're trying to do. So since this is a guide for new YouTubers and not in a guide for advanced YouTubers, I'm going to make sure that the information is going to be presented in the most basic and easy to understand way as possible. So you can see here, 
here, I've put that the information should be straightforward, uplifting, and easy to understand since it's for new YouTubers. It should ensure that they have a clear grasp of everything they need to do in order to grow their YouTube channel. In addition, this is where the configure tab comes into play. Before I input this information, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the configure tab and I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I upload some new files. Now, you might be wondering why is it that we're going to do the upload new files thing? Well, if you remember, GPT-4's knowledge base is only up to April the 4th, 2023, which essentially means that any new or newly discovered information about channel growth isn't going to be there for those new YouTubers to benefit from. When you're making your GPT bot, ensure that you look online on the internet and gather as much new data as possible after April 2023 to ensure that your GPT bot has this information relevant. So you can see here that in September 2023, we updated our guidelines about controversial issues, allowing creators to earn more ad revenue on content discussing topics that are pretty controversial. What I need to do now is I essentially just need to download this, I can simply just copy this text. And then of course, I can simply paste this into the bot. The reason I can do this is because it makes sure now that no information is missed. So now I'm simply just going to paste this in a Word document, and then I'm just going to save this and upload this. So now I'm going to go ahead and upload this file to make sure that it has that data on it. So you can see here that this is the guidelines. Now, if I wanted more information for this channel growth companion, what I could do is I could then spend the next 20 to 25 minutes researching online about the latest YouTube growth statistics. One easy way to do this is simply by going on YouTube and then by searching for specific content. Now, what you need to do here, since video is a very good way to gauge the information that you're going to get, what you want to do is you want to make sure that these videos are actually really good in quality before dumping them into your bot. Because if the information is irrelevant or bad, it's going to make your bot worse. So let's say, for example, I wanted to include some data from this video since it has 2.4 million views. So once you've found the video that you've wanted and you've clicked on it, just make sure you scroll all the way down then click shows transcript. Once you've got the transcript, make sure that you click these three buttons right here and then make sure you click on toggle timestamps. This will disable the timestamps and now you have all of this data right here. Now that you've got the transcript, what you want to do is you want to copy this transcript by simply scrolling down and making sure that you take the entire transcript and make sure that you copy it onto your clipboard. So let's say for example, I want to copy all of this data, which I'm doing now. I'm going to copy all of this in. And if you want to do this quickly, just, and if you want to do this quickly, just hold it down here and you can copy this really, really quickly. And then around a couple of seconds, once you've reached the bottom, just click control C or just right click, then just click copy. Then in a new document, you can just click paste like that. Then of course, save this as a PDF or .txt file and you've added that to knowledge to your information base. Next, you can see we can then upload this file. And now I have, and now that that file has uploaded, I now have a very popular YouTuber's strategy. I also have some of the latest guidelines and then I can go back to the create tab. Now, in order to make sure that you reference some of the PDF. So you want to put ensure you reference the PDF info I give you. Then of course, I'm going to click enter and we're going to wait for it to process this data. Now you can see it asks us, what should the GPT avoid mentioning or doing? Now, this is the really interesting part. This is where you can fine tune the bot a little bit more to give it the advice and steer it in a way where things you think that the bot shouldn't do. So since this is helping new YouTubers, you might want it to avoid mentioning some advanced tactics, confuse some beginning YouTubers. In other niches, for example, let's say in fitness, if you were trying to help people in a certain fitness niche and you knew that there was a certain trend around a certain diet, you might say avoid mentioning the keto diet, avoid mentioning the all new carnivore diet, or avoid mentioning certain things that are going to prevent them from success. It really does depend on your niche, but I've added a few things here that I think YouTubers should avoid. Additionally, if you do get confused about this bit, as always, you can just simply ask Google or do some Reddit posts and search around. And I'm sure when you search around, you can simply find stuff that's going to help you. So for example, I found this article here and it says many different things. And some of these things I can include to my custom GPT bot. And for this, I could simply say, avoid mentioning useless things such as the soundtracks and just ensure that this user focuses on making videos because a lot of new YouTubers try to focus on all the fancy stuff such as lighting. And oftentimes they forget that you really just need to create a compelling video. So that's something that you could add. Now, of course, I've now input that into the bot. So now you can see it's asking me, should it ask for clarification or make an educated guess based on typical YouTuber concerns? Based on ChatGPT's knowledge base, if you do have all the relevant PDFs, I would say definitely say make an educated guess. But if you don't have the PDFs and you don't have that extra specific data, I would say ask 
for clarification just to ensure that ChatGPT or your GPT knows exactly the right direction. Then of course, lastly, we have the tone and you can see that it says expresses personality. Should it have a friendly or encouraging tone or do you prefer a more professional and formal style? I think this should be friendly. So I'm going to do friendly and encouraging. Additionally, this section is where you can tailor it to your age. So for example, if this was something for kids, you can definitely tailor it to be more childlike. You can say, make it more friendly and encouraging for a specific age group. Or if it's for a specific demographic, you can definitely put that in mind. For example, if this was for a company, I would suspect that you would want it to be much more professional and more formal. And then you would put the ages of people that are in that company. So now you can see it says channel growth companion is now ready to assist you with a friendly and encouraging approach. Would you like to take it for a test run? And you can see on the right hand side here, this is where we can interact with the companion. Now that we've used the GPT builder, I'm going to show you about the configure tab and some more things that you can really do that's going to make this more amazing. One thing that you'll notice is that when you're in the configure tab, you can see that there are four small boxes here on the right hand side. Now with these small four boxes, essentially what these are, these are essentially prompts that help the user interact with the software if they don't know what to send straight away. So you can see that these are called conversation starters and you can either delete these or add these as you wish. So one of the things we know is that YouTube SEO isn't as important. So I can X this and say, how do I improve my SEO? Because if new YouTubers are going to be asking this stuff, it's definitely going to confuse them and make them waste time. So I'm going to go ahead and click X and remove that. And you can see right there, it is absolutely removed. So you can see I've highlighted two new issues that I know new YouTubers face. So I've decided to add these right here and only the four ones are going to show. So I say, how do I make videos more efficiently since new YouTubers are always trying to make videos more efficiently because they lack time. Usually they have a different job or an occupation, which prevents them from uploading regularly. In addition, one of the things that new YouTubers do struggle with is their fear of being on camera. So I've included that right there. In addition, of course, we already do have the knowledge here, which is of course the PDFs or the TXT files that we have. And of course, you can see that we have web browsing capabilities, Dali's image generation and code interpreter, which essentially is advanced data analysis. Now, when you're also making this bot, ensure you check out the instructions tab. As you've made your GPT with GPT Builder, if you didn't use this tab, or even if you did, you'll see that they've basically made all the information that we talked about into one concise paragraph. Sometimes GPT Builder might actually miss out some key things. So if it's missed out anything that you think it has, make sure you add it here to ensure that it moves and acts in the correct way possible. Now, remember, you do have capabilities such as web browsing, DALI 3 and code interpreter. So if you want to make sure that your bot is more focused on one of these things, you could then add something like saying, I always browse the internet to ensure I get the most relevant up-to-date information so I can give it to the user. This is something that you may want to tell your model because I can guarantee sometimes you're going to want to steer it to web browsing or sometimes you're going to want to steer it to certain types of image creation. There is also an article on our website that gives you some of these instructions that you can simply copy. It formats it correctly. So you have the instructions part and then you have the avoid part. This is exactly how you want to format your instructions and it's going to give you the best format for your GPTs and we'll leave a link to this in the description. Then of course we have ChatGPT actions. So down here you can see that there's this little box that says add actions. When you click add actions this is essentially something that is a little bit more advanced but it's not that hard to understand. Firstly what I'm going to do is I'm going to play you the demo from the OpenAI dev day then I'm going to come back here and show you how you can add your own custom actions with Zapier so that you can do this for yourself. So to start where your GPT will live is on this upper left corner. I'm gonna start with clicking on the Zapier AI actions. And on the right hand side, you can see that's my calendar for today. So it's quite a day. I've already used this before, so it's actually already connected to my calendar. To start, I can ask, what's on my schedule for today? We build GPTs with security in mind. So before it performs any action or share data, it will ask for your permission. So right here, I'm gonna say allowed. So GBT is designed to take in your instructions, make the decision on which capability to call to perform that action, and then execute that for you. So you can see right here, it's already connected to my calendar. It pulls into my, my information, and then I've also prompted it to identify conflicts on my calendar. So you can see right here, it actually was able to identify that. So it looks like I have something coming up. So what if I wanna let Sam know that I have to leave early? So right here I say, let Sam know I gotta go, um, chasing GPUs. Thank you. <laughs> so with that, I'm gonna swap to my conversation with Sam. 
and then I'm gonna say, yes, please run that. Sam, did you get that? I did. Awesome. So, this is now that you've watched the OpenAI Dev Day, you can see that this is something that's really useful for personal use. And if you want to share this, maybe there's going to be other applications that you want to build this with. Maybe, for example, Notion or Gmail and then share this. This is going to be something that you can do if you want to make a lot of money. So as you can see, it says AI Actions by Zapier. Now, this is subject to probably change because it is in its AI alpha. But you can see here it says actions are a tool for builders to equip AI platforms with the ability to to run any Zapier action. You can see that there are 20,000 different actions that are combined with of these applications here. And there are many different other applications that it does combine with. The reason you're going to be using this is because mainly what you're going to want to do is to find a Slack message, message someone, or to draft a Gmail reply or to create something. This just helps you because rather than going into the app and doing it yourself, you can then ask your custom GPT to do it for you. It's basically like a personal assistant on the fly, but this one actually has access to your data so it can actually go ahead and respond to a certain email or do that stuff. For example, imagine asking it to find all the emails related to a certain project and it can go ahead and get that. One thing that you need to understand about actions is that when you write your actions, even if you have them for private use, when you share these apps, they're going to be guided to connect to their own apps. So even if you share them, it's going to make sure that once you've shared them, the users that use them are going to be guided to connect them to their own apps. So for example, this is Calendly GPT. And when I click what's on my calendar today, you can see that first of all, it's going to actually need to get my actions. So I do need to sign in first. And of course, that's what it's going to do when other people use your GPT. So in in order to get started, what you're firstly going to need to do is copy this URL to your clipboard. Then, of course, after you've created your GPT, we're going to head and on the right hand side, it says import OpenAI schema. And of course, we're going to paste that in and then we're going to click load. Once we've loaded that in, you can see right here, this is so much text. And then we're going to go ahead and click save. Now that that is saved in, you can see that this is a Zapier AI actions for GPT. And you can see that it's got the callback URL there. Then, of course, if you use this article, you can come down to the instructions template for AI actions. So what we have here is the instructions that you can use as a template that help your GPT do your Zapier actions. So essentially, you're just going to want to go ahead and copy this. And then into your bot, you're going to head and at your instructions tab, you're going to click enter and just paste it at the bottom. But in addition, when you do sign up to Zapier for the first time, you're going to see many different apps here. You're going to want to make sure that if you use any of these apps within your business, you just go ahead and you click these so that when it does the AI actions and they're building what recommendations they're going to give you, you can immediately have those. Then of course, you're going to want to make sure that you give OpenAI access. Just click allow here. Then of course, as you can see on this Zapier dashboard, you can see many of the different zaps that you can. Also make sure you do sign into these apps and grant them permissions or else when you do have these zaps and you're trying to test them out, it isn't going to work. Lastly, when you are doing this bot and you want to make sure that you've finalized everything. So once you're done, making your GPT, you've previewed it, everything is fine and working correctly. You're then going to be able to click save. You can either click save, you can see only people with a link, which essentially means you only shared it to people with a link. This is good if you want to preview it to a bunch of people before a public release. You can of course make it public, which means people are going to be able to, you can of course make it public, but do note that if it is public, the GPT may appear in the GPT store if people do search for it. And that is of course when the GPT store does come. If you do only for you and you click confirm, essentially your GPT is going to be here on the left hand side and you're going to be able to interact with this in any way that you do want.